Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is a quick tutorial about how to use PowerPoint to edit and manipulate images for technical writing purposes. And so what I'm going to show you here is just one way to increase the value of an image used to explain a technical process. And so it's going to be a pretty basic uh, set of instructions here. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to use the canvas of a PowerPoint slide uh, as a place where we can add an image, um, add text, add lines, add shapes, and generally make the image more useful. And so some of you have probably noticed that I posted two student written examples of instructions on Blackboard. One explains how to regrip a golf club and the other explains how to tie a classic main fly uh, for fishing purposes, the Mickey Finn. And so I'm going to be uh, creating an image that would have been really helpful in that set of instructions about how to tie a fly. And so uh, one of the things that I know as a, I wouldn't say expert, but as a pretty experienced fly tire is that when you're teaching somebody how to tie a fly for the first time, one of the most important things to coach them on and to teach them is the sort of anatomy of a fishing hook. That is to say, the various landmarks on a fishing hook, like the eye of the hook, the shank of the hook, the bend of the hook, the barb and the point of the hook. And that's important because it allows uh, for frames of reference. So it helps folks when they're putting materials onto the hook. They know where things ought to go uh, relative to those various landmarks. And so what I'd like to show you today is how we could create a very simple um, image in PowerPoint uh, that would probably help the reader pretty significantly overcome the jargon associated with the various parts of a fishing hook. And so what I've done is I've gone online, I've used Google Images to find a really good clear image of a fishing hook, in this case a streamer hook, which is basically just a, a hook with a longer shank. And I've copied that, so I have that copied, and I've opened up PowerPoint here, and, and uh, don't, don't be alarmed, I, I do use a Mac, so your interface if you're using uh, Word on a PC is probably going to be a little bit different, but the functionality is primarily the same. Uh, so I have a blank slide here. I've just started a new presentation, and you'll see that I have these text boxes here, which are not really that uh, helpful at this juncture. So I'm just going to click and uh, delete those. I'm going to click on the outside, and when you see that they're highlighted, you can delete those. And uh, what I'm going to do very simply is I'm going to paste um, that fishing hook onto this slide. And so now I have a very clear image of a fishing hook. And you'll see up here, we have a menu of uh, available options for how we can manipulate this image and uh, things that we can add to the slide. So what I'm going to do really quickly, just to give myself a little bit more working room, uh, is I'm going to shrink the picture a little bit and I'm just going to slide it down uh, so I have a little bit more room. Because what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a title. And to do that, I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to click text box. I'm going to drag and figure out roughly where I want this text box to be. I'm going to center the text just as you would using Microsoft Word. I'm going to make the font a little bit bigger here and I am going to call this image Anatomy of a Fishing Hook so that my reader knows um, what they're looking at. And uh, from there what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to think about uh, what I need to show my reader. Uh, what would be helpful for them to see in this image and you can imagine that uh, this type of uh, imagery would be really helpful if you were trying to explain the relative locations of things. Um, so for instance, you know, the classic example I use is if you were trying to instruct somebody how to change a component in a computer and they opened up the guts of the computer, they'd probably be pretty overwhelmed by the sheer amount of uh, components and technology inside the shell of that computer. So what you'd probably want to do is highlight the things that matter. So you may want to, you know, use arrows to draw um, distinction. You may want to, you know, place boxes or stars next to the things that are important. And here what I'm going to do is just show you very simply how to use um, arrows and shapes uh, to add value to a reader's experience. And so uh, the cool thing about PowerPoint is that it's all drag and drop. You can basically click and drag things wherever you'd like to have them, which is really great. You don't have to worry about tabs and settings and things like that. So it's really, it's what I, it's what I call what you see is what you get. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click and I'm going to use um, the arrows uh, to point to things. So for instance, I'm going to click on this and I'm just going to drag and draw an arrow. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell people, I'm going to tell my reader that this right here 
is the eye of the hook, which is important in fly tying because you don't want to crowd the eye of the hook. Um, and so what I'm going to do is use that arrow. I'm going to add another little text box here, draw a little text box, and then I'm just going to say this is the eye of hook. Okay, um, and then again, as I've said, everything here is drag and drop, so I'm going to get this roughly where I want it so that it's clear that that line is pointing to the eye of the hook. Um, I can do that again and again and again um, just by going up here and using my menu of options. I might want to draw an arrow here. You can, oh my god, it's the wrong way, so I'm just going to click and drag and reorient it to point down here, and maybe I want to point to the, uh, the barb of the hook. So I'm going to use the same thing here. I'm going to draw a little arrow. I'm going to add a little text box. Pretty simple, um, and I'm just going to say this is the, the hook barb, okay? And you can see that over time I could really create a nice little uh, diagram here that names the various parts of the hook so that when in the uh, body or in the coaching section of my instructions I say, you know, wrap the thread back to even with the, the barb of the hook or coat the entire shank of the hook with uh, head cement or whatever it is that I would be saying, um, my reader would have a fighting chance and they could use this image as, as a reference point. You'll see that um, there are other things that you can do. There are shapes that you could add. You could add boxes. Uh, so sometimes you want to highlight something with a box, um, which is really sometimes a good idea. You want to draw a box uh, around something, um, but oh my god, now I've covered it up. What's cool is that if you just right hand click on this, you can go down to format shape, and you can do all sorts of great stuff. So you can change the, the colors of the outline, you can change the color of the fill, you can make it transparent by uh, saying no fill, you can change the outside line and make it more bold by uh, messing with the weights and the arrows so I can make it more bold if I wanted to. And you can see uh, as I click up on this scale it's getting bolder and bolder. I can add shadows and all sorts of different types of elements. Um, but you can see uh, that this could be really helpful if I wanted to explain, if I wanted to draw attention to a particular component within um, a larger image, or in this case if I wanted to just denote that this, within this box is the hook shank, I could easily do so. Um, and then again, I could just add some text here to clarify that uh, this is the shank of the hook. Um, and so, Without too much trouble here, I can start to improve my reader's experience um, by just adding a little bit more information to an image. And so that's principally what I'd like you to practice or to try to do. And, and, and this may come in handy at various points in the semester because uh, there are many times when an image in and of itself isn't really worth a thousand words. Um, it does help and it gives us a frame of reference, but when we can start to manipulate images and add more data and information to the images, they uh, almost automatically become more useful. And so, um, you know, with a little playing around, I could really make a, a high quality, uh, high value image for my reader. And I, and I hope that that's helpful for you. And so you're probably wondering, okay, great, Mike, now I've created this, what, what do I do with it? So uh, all you have to do is go File and Save As, and instead of saving this as a PowerPoint presentation, what's really cool is that I can go down here and I can choose one of these um, image files. And uh, these are all fairly common image types. I'm going to save it as a .jpeg or a JPEG because those tend to be uh, smaller files um, and they're, they're very cross compatible. Almost any program can open them. And so I'm going to save it as a JPEG. I'm going to title the um, presentation Anatomy of Hook. And then I'm just going to click Save. And what this is actually going to do is it's going to create a folder. And um, say I did this, say I had a series of images here, uh, multiple slides that I had used to create diagrams. It's going to save each one of those slides as an image. And then I can just click OK because it's going to tell me that it's saved. And basically now this is saved as an image file uh, that I can go and find and then import into a Word document or I can copy and paste it into a Word document. Um, and I can uh, instantaneously help my reader with this task. Uh, and so there's a lot of, I'm not going to go into the, the weeds here, but there's a lot of things that you could do. For instance, if you weren't happy with the, the weight or the thickness of that line, you didn't think it was prominent enough or you don't think it created enough contrast, you can just right hand click, format the shape, you can change the color, maybe you want to have black, um, maybe you want to make it thicker so that it stands out more on the page, you can do that by clicking on weights and arrows and simply making it uh, 
a thicker line. You can change the way that the arrow actually looks if you, if you want. Um, there's all sorts of different things that you can do. You can get into the weeds a little bit if you want. Um, but it's pretty simple to use a, a software that we're all relatively familiar with to automatically start to add value to our reader's experience. And that's ultimately what we're trying to do. And so one of the things that I want you to consider uh, whenever you're trying to clarify technical writing is that an image um, is not an image, is not an image, is not an image. There are certain images that are more helpful, that contain more valuable and instructive information than others. And there are times when as the technical writer we need to intervene and add even more information uh, so that the reader maximizes uh, the value of that particular image. And so in a nutshell that's, that's one way that you can use PowerPoint. I'm going to follow this video up um, with a quick video showing folks how to use Google Drawings which is built into the Google uh, the Google Drive suite uh, and uh, I'll show you what that's all about. It's, it's equally easy, a lot of the same functionality um, and so yeah, so that's what's up. So if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to pass along more resources. Uh, there's a, there's a, you know, a wide variety of YouTube videos that instruct folks how to do this and certainly you can do this in other, in other softwares too. You can do this in Photoshop, you can do this in Microsoft Paint, you can do this in a free image editing software called GIMP, G-I-M-P. Um, which is also very easy to use. So there's a lot of available options. I just chose to use PowerPoint because it's a software that a lot of people are familiar with um, and there's you know, not a lot of barriers uh, in place. You can just get in, dive in, and, and start creating images that are helpful. So I hope that's helpful. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'm happy to meet with you and work with you. If you, if you have an idea for an image that you'd like to implement or incorporate into your instructions, I'm happy to sit down with you and, and show you what this might look like. Uh, there, there are so many applications for this, um, and so I hope that you find that to be helpful.